Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Israel, Most High and Christ Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Josiah to my right. Officer Yara Cobb. Today's topic is going to be white looking Israelites or Israelites that I guess don't look like Israelites. Okay, whatever that means. We know historically, uh, let's, let's start out with um, Jeremiah 14 and 2, for example. Okay. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Come on. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. So now the Bible does describe Judah or the Jews as looking black, like the earth. Different shades of brown, just like the earth, right? But the topic is white looking Israelites. So will there be Israelites that don't have that physical description? Okay, when you see them. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with uh, Numbers 1 and 18. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. This right here uh, dictates who you are as a nation. Okay, what nation do you belong to? Read. This is the book of Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Come on. And they declare their pedigrees, their pedigree, their genealogy, their lineage. Come on. After their families <clears throat> by the house of their fathers. By what? By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. So that means you are whatever your father is. OK, it doesn't matter what your physical description is, what you look like. You are what your father is. OK. Give me Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Okay. Hosea 7 and 8. Because let's give an example. Um, let's say a Judite, right? Black unto the ground. Dark brother. He deals with Moab, Chinese woman, right? The child's going to come out looking. Let's say it's a boy. The child comes out looking a little different. Then that same boy also deals with a Moabite. Right. That boy comes out. He also deals with a Moabite. You get it. So forth and so on and so on. OK, those children are going to lose their different features that they had. Uh, their original great grandfather, father, the Judite brother we started out with. OK, but read Hosea 7 and 8. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 7 and verse 8. Now, I just want to make the point real quick. God does still say that sin. Right. The Most High says we're not to make marriages with them. But that particular child still is Israel based on their lineage. Okay, according to their father. So read. Hosea chapter 7 and verse 8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is talking about the head tribe of the northern kingdom. So when it says Ephraim, it's really talking about all the tribes there. Ephraim did what? Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. It says Ephraim is a cake not turned. So if you have a cake and you're cooking it on one side, okay, and you don't flip it over, one side is going to be dark, one side is going to be white or light, very light. Okay, read it again. 
Ephraim. He hath mixed himself among the people. Come on. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Is that it? Yes, sir. So Ephraim is a cake not turned. It says Ephraim is a cake not turned. So oftentimes when you see Ephraim or the northern kingdom, you're going to see some of them that are dark and some that are light. Okay. Give me um, Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2 verse 10. This is the book of Esther, chapter 2 and verse 10. Esther hath not showed her people, nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Jump up to verse 5. Verse 5. Now, in Sushan, the place, there was a certain Jew mm -hmm. whose name was Mordecai, uh -huh. the son of Jair, Jair, the son of Shimei. The son of Kish, a Benjamite. So it says Mordecai is a Benjamite. Okay. He was a Benjamite. Verse 7. Verse 7. And he brought up Hadassah. That is Esther. So Hadassah is her Hebrew name. Esther was her quote unquote slave name or name. The name was changed to. Okay. Hadassah is Esther. Read on. His uncle's daughter. Mm -hmm. For she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. So obviously Esther had lost her parents and Mordecai took her in to raise her. Now jump down to verse 10. So she was a Benjamite. Now watch this, verse 10. Now this is during the time of the Persian and Mede captivity. Now the Persians are the East Indians today. Okay, that's what this is. Now watch this, verse 10. Verse 10. <clears throat> Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred for Mordecai had charged her that she should she should not show it. It says Esther had not show her people nor her kindred. What does that mean? Esther, you couldn't look at her and tell, oh, that's an Israelite right there. She had a different look to her. Okay. During the time of the Persian captivity, she had a different look. You couldn't tell she was a quote unquote Israelite. All right. When you saw her, that's why I said she had not, she not did what? Read it again. Verse 10, Esther had not showed her people. She nor, had not showed her people. Nor her kindred. Nor her kindred. Come on. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Right. Don't reveal this. Okay. Why? Because she had a particular job set up to go in there and, you know, as the history goes on, she had a particular duty to save Israel. Okay. But she didn't look as you would quote, quote unquote, say black unto the ground. Okay. She didn't look like that. She had a different look to her. Not saying she wasn't dark skin or brown skin, but she's not readily um, evident. It wasn't readily evident she was Israel. Okay. From there, give me a uh, first Ezra in the Apocrypha. First Ezra chapter eight. Verse 69. This is the book of first Ezra chapter eight and verse 69. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests and Levites. Now, these are the men. It says the priests, the, the princes, the priests, and the Levites, right? Come on. Have not put away from them the strange people of the land, uh -huh. nor the pollutions of the Gentiles uh -huh. to wit. Their, their idolatry and so forth. But read on. Of the Canaanites, mm -hmm. Hittites, uh -huh. Parasites, Jebusites. So all these are quote unquote Hamite nations or African nations. Read on. And the Moabites. So now we got Moabites. So we have Chinese. Read on. Egyptians. More Africans. And Edomites. And the so-called Caucasian. Okay. So the nation of Israel dealt with these particular nations. The men did. All right. So the children are going to come out looking different in some instances. Read on. For both they and their sons. You see, it says both they and their sons. Remember Numbers 1 and 18. You are who your father is. By the seed of your fathers, they and their sons did what? Have married with their daughters. Uh -huh. And the holy seed is mixed with the strange people of the land. Uh -huh. And from the beginning of this matter, the rulers and the great men have been partakers of this iniquity. Of this what? Of this iniquity. Of this iniquity. So interracial relations is sin according to God. But it's just letting you know. Our forefathers did some of those things. Okay. They partook in that iniquity. So again, the children will come out not looking 
like their fathers in every instance. Okay, from there, give me First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter one, and verse four. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter one and verse four. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith so do. So now it says, in this walk, we're not to give heed to fables or endless genealogies. So when you see somebody, you out teaching, passing the fly and so forth, hey, you know, what's your father? Oh, so and so. Okay. And that's it. You don't you don't have to well, what's his father? What's his father? What's his father? And so forth and so on. Okay. Do they identify with the curses? Will they apply the commandments? That's it. Okay. It does it says don't give heed to endless genealogies. All right. Now, some of us come into this truth and we think we're we're a certain tribe, right? Like you at one particular time thought that you were uh Judah, right? Right. But through research and Speaking with your fathers and so forth, you you come to find out you're what tribe? I'm actually the tribe of Gad. Tribe of Gad, okay. So we out on the streets teaching. Now, this is not how it happened. I'm just giving an example. We If we out on the streets teaching with this brother, we say, hey, brother, yeah, you from the tribe of Judah. But we don't know that, okay, through research, he come to find out that he's from the tribe of Gad. But that's why the scripture says uh, we're not to give uh, he to fables or endless genealogies. Okay, maybe the Most High will reveal those things in time. But can you can you apply the commandments? Okay, do you identify with Deuteronomy twenty eight and the curses and so forth? That's it. Okay, this walk is faith based. All right, all of us don't know. You know, I assume I'm from Judah. I believe that. But you know, give me First Corinthians. Watch this. First Corinthians thirteen. I'm gonna show y'all something. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. Watch. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, mm -hmm. but then face to face. So it's, it's, Paul is letting us know right now in this walk, we see through a glass darkly. Meaning what? You can't see clearly everything that's on the other side of that thing. Everything is not clear, readily uh, evident to us. Read it again. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Uh -huh. Now I know in part. But then face to, face to face, meaning in the wilderness, Christ is going to reveal certain things to us. Read. Now I know in part. Now we know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. It says we know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. So Christ may say, no, you're not from the tribe of Judah. You're from the tribe of Gad. No, you're from the tribe of Simeon. Right. You understand? We think just like we're going to get new names in the kingdom. We, we, have, we have temporary names now that we've labeled ourselves, but Christ is going to say, no, that's not your name. Your name is so-and-so. You're not from the tribe of, of Simeon. You're from this tribe. You're not from that tribe. You're from this tribe. It says, read that last part again. But then shall I know even as also I am known. But then shall I know even also as I am known. So it's certain things about ourselves that we don't even know. That's what the scripture is telling us. Okay. So you think you from such and such tribe. No, you, you may not be. All right. Give me Matthew 13. All right. So <clears throat> whether we have uh, quote unquote white looking Israelites amongst us. Hey, this walk is faith-based. Okay, are they applying the commandments? We'll see, all right? Matthew 13, 24, verse 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 13 and verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. So the kingdom is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Read on. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So now jump down to verse 37, 37 and 38. Watch this. Verse 37. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. So now when we read in verse 24 and it says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed 
That's talking about Christ, the son of man. Read on. 38. 38. The field is the world. So when he said he sowed good uh, seed in the field, the field is talking about the world. Read on. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. So the good seed is the children of who? Are the children of the kingdom. That's the Israelites. Okay. Read on. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. It says, but the tares is the children of the wicked one. Jump back. Jump back to verse, read 24 and 25 again. Verse 24. Another parable. Put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. So Christ put the Israelites in the world. That's what he's talking about. Okay. We inhabit the earth. Read on. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. In our captivity, throughout these different captivities, okay, we mingled ourselves amongst the nations as well. All right. And now we have, it says we have tares among the wheat. Read on. 26. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So now, as we begin to repent and come back to this truth, all of a sudden there's tares that, that's coming in with us. Okay? White looking Israelites, as you know, they may think. All right? Could be, could be not. I'm not saying they are. But it says tares, period. Even they may look like Jake. Okay? They may look Israel, but they're tares. Okay? Read on. Verse 27. So the servants of the house householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? So didn't this belong to Israel? Wasn't this all supposed to be the, just the nation of Israel alone? Read on. From whence then hath it tares? Mm -hmm. So how did the tares get in there with the good seed, with the wheat? Read on. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. An enemy hath done this. Satan did this. Read on. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? So now that's us. I see somebody that doesn't look like us among us. Let's go tell him to get out of here. Okay. Shall we go do that, Christ? Read. But he said, Nay, least while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So now you're judging based on appearance. This person looks like this. This person looks like that. Christ is telling you, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to get it wrong. Okay. He said, what? Less what? 29 Nay. again? Nay. Least while you gather up the tares. While you gather those that are tares. So there's our, there are tares amongst us. While you gather them. Come on. Ye root up also the wheat with them. So that means some of the wheat may look like the tares. Right? So you may met pulling up tares. You pull up some of the wheat also. Because why? They look the same. Okay? They may look the same. Read it one more time. Verse 29. But he said, Nay, least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Come on. Let both grow together. Christ said, let them both repent. Let them come in. Let them grow together. Read on. Until the harvest. Uh-huh. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. And bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Right. So now jump down to 37 again. Verse 37. He answered and said unto them. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Come on. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Uh huh. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. So now he said, let them both grow together. And in time of harvest, it says harvest is what? The harvest is the end of the world. Read on. And the reapers are the angels. So he said in verse, uh, where is it at? Verse 30. Read 30 again. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. Until the end of the world. Come on. And in the time of harvest. I will say to the reapers. I will say to the angels to do what? Gather ye together first the tares. So get those that are tares. Read. And, and bind them in bundles to burn them. You see that? So nobody's going to escape. Nobody's going to just creep in and pretend they Israel and get away with it. 
Okay, Christ is telling you the angels are going to take care of that. Read on. But gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, let's jump back down again. Verse 30, 37. Or yep. Well, 39, 39. 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Read. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. The reapers are the angels. Okay, read on. Verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. So Christ is going to get those that are tares amongst us. They're going to be gathered together and burned with fire. So that means what? That they're going to come in. They're going to have fringes on. They may keep the Sabbath. They may do this. They may do that. But they're tares and Christ is going to judge them. Okay. They're the enemy seed. Okay. The children of the wicked. They're not getting the kingdom. Okay. Read on. 41. The son of man shall send forth his angels mm -hmm. and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Read on. And them which do iniquity. So now all things that offend. Remember he said in verse 29, he said, no, don't mess with them. As one, read 29 again. Verse 29. But he said, nay, least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. You see that? So you could try to look with your carnal eye to say, yeah, this person is Israel, this person is not. You end up pulling up some of the wheat, some of the children of the kingdom. And that's offending the little ones. Okay? Because you could cause that particular spirit to fall out. Okay? And there's judgment on you for that. Read uh, 41 again. Verse 41, the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Read on. And them which do iniquity. Read on. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Come on. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Then shall the righteous stand forth in what? In the king, in the kingdom of their father. Uh-huh. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You see that? So we all have ears. So it ain't literally talking about your physical ears on your body. It's saying if you can understand what he's saying, understand. All right? So with the carnal eye, we can't look and tell, okay, yeah, this person is real, that person is real, or this person is not, and that person is not. It's based on the seed of their fathers, whoever their fathers is. If they don't know their father, then... Christ said, let both grow together. Okay. The angels is going to do the uh, separation during the time of harvest. All right. So Lord willing, y'all got some out of the lesson with that. We say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.